Hello, Michael Obra here, uh, video for my English 102 hybrid class this summer at Shoreline Community College. Um, we're going to start today with a couple of general announcements and then we'll go into kind of the nuts and bolts of research questions, which will help prepare you for your first big assignment, which is a research proposal. So general announcements first, um, due 629 is your MLA format assignment. Um, now the MLA format assignment is basically a template to make sure that you understand MLA 8 format, which if you took English 101 is, you've probably already got down. We're going to go over it anyway. It's an easy 10 points. Uh, so this is the correct heading, right? So your name, my name, the course, English 102, and the date. Um, centered title, upper right hand corner should be um, your last name and the page number. Centered title, which for our purposes for the MLA format can simply be um, MLA format uh, assignment. In the body, you will write um, you, what you have trouble with as a writer, any challenges that you have or have had in the past. At the bottom, you do need to include the correct MLA 8 citation for all of our course textbooks. So that is Frankenstein, uh, Do Android Dreams of Electric Sheep, uh, the Island of Dr. Moreau, and Writing with Style. Um, if you have any questions about that, I suggest you go to Purdue OWL website, P-U-R-D-U-E-O-W-L, um, and that should help. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Again, there is a template on Canvas under Files. You can look at that and follow it um, very easily. Today, in addition to watching this presentation, which you're already doing, um, you will also watch a short TED Talk um, the link is on Canvas and you will contribute to the discussion. So that contribution it comes in two parts. So the first part is that you need to um, respond to the, the question that I have posted. Uh, the second part is that you will respond to one of your classmates. Now that, again, uh, as we saw yesterday in the presentation uh, on over course overview needs to be more than just I agree or I disagree. Um, I would aim for a couple three sentences, four sentences. You probably don't need to do more than four or five sentences there. Um, again, just to kind of get the discussion going and then we'll follow up in class. So on to research questions. Research questions. So again, because this is English 102 is a research class. I mean, in English 101, you learned some different types of essays. Probably you learned some kind of general nuts and bolts. Um, English 102 is really the same idea. It's just we're focusing now primarily on the research essay, right? As we already talked about. So the research question for me is kind of the, the foundations, the building block for a research essay. And I like to think of it the same way I think about um, a science experiment, right? So I have an idea, um, and I'm kind of curious something I'm curious about. Then I'm going to create a hypothesis about that, and then following that, I'm going to do a little bit of experiment, which for our purposes is the research itself. Um, and it's kind of a way to develop this essay, and, and we'll walk through this. So the first thing is kind of to think about what you're interested in learning. Now, again, our Central question for this course is kind of a philosophical one. What makes us human? So a potential uh, research question might be, are scientific advances allowing humans to exceed previous limitations? That's kind of still a relatively broad question, but a little bit narrower than simply what makes us human, which could encompass a whole host of things. Um, Right, and you can see that I've actually steered away from uh, things like genetics or DNA. Um, I've steered away from, you know, just simply artificial intelligence and things like that, which would also be viable questions. This question allows me to begin some research, right? So now I'm having, with this in mind, I can kind of start to think about how I'm going to go about my research. And our next step will be uh, a hypothesis statement and eventually a thesis statement. So, why do we use research questions? And, you know, as I said here, it may be very obvious. We use research questions or RQs to narrow the field of possible ideas, as I just mentioned. The RQ provides us a basis uh, for initial research. It allows us to develop a hypothesis, and it will allow us to investigate whether the essay is tenable or viable, which is just another way of saying, 
Is it possible to write this essay, or is the question simply too broad or too narrow to create one essay out of? How do we use them, right? So now we know why we use them, is to figure out whether or not we can actually write an essay, whether or not there's enough information on this. And we're gonna go on to how we use them. So again, consider that the, the course focus this quarter is what makes us human. So this itself is not really a re research question. Um, it's a little bit too broad for our purposes uh, because there's there are way, 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 way too many things that we could um, put underneath that umbrella. So we need to narrow it down. And by m narrowing it down to are scientific advances allowing humans to exceed previous limitations, we can further focus our research, right? Uh, my first step is usually to identify what do I already know? And maybe I already know about Oscar Pistorius, right, the Blade Runner, uh, some of you may know or remember from uh, previous Olympics. And I can kind of think about, okay, well, part of the controversy with Pistorius, uh, Pistorius running in the Olympics was that he might have had this advantage with these special prosthetic limbs, right? Uh, so that is interesting. Is he, uh, does he have an advantage? Is he exceeding some limitation? The next thing that I need to do from that, even though I maybe have some idea, I need to do a little bit of research, right, to figure out whether there is a yes or no answer to the research question. Now, at the beginning, I think that this is the best way to think about a research question is, is it yes or no? Because then I'm simply proving a case, right, through evidence, which is my research. So if I decide the answer is yes, then I need to go find some examples. If I decide no, then I need to think of why my examples, such as the Blade Runner, Oscar Pistorius, are not proof of the question. And this will lead me further towards that hypothesis statement. Once we have that research question, and again, this is all kind of overview, so, so don't worry, this is, takes us, uh, several steps, right? Because first you're gonna come up with your research question, then you're gonna do some research to see whether it's viable, and then after that, you'll get to your hypothesis statement. So we convert that research question into a hypothesis statement. And a hypothesis statement, as I said, is the next step in the research process, right? And we're not done at this point. We haven't even gotten to our thesis. And I, again, although this may seem like a lot of work, this will make your papers stronger. So if I take my research question, are scientific advances allowing humans to exceed previous limitations, I can now turn that into a hypothesis statement based on what I've researched, three, four, five sources that I've looked at and investigated. So I can say, perhaps, the positive. Scientific advances allow humans to exceed previous limitations, right? So now my goal is to conduct some uh, additional research which supports my hypothesis now that I have a clear focus, right? And again, kind of think about this research hypothesis as kind of a narrowing down or that inverted pyramid maybe you've talked about in some other classes. So that will lead you inevitably, well, maybe not inevitably, but in this class it will be inevitable that it will take you to the research proposal. So the research proposal, the rough draft is due July 3rd, 2017, so that'll be online so you'll submit that through Canvas. It will be two to three pages in formal tone. And again, we've talked about formal tone in class. So if you have any questions, you'll either want to email me or refer back to your notes. This will include your initial research question, a summary of your preliminary research, and a su suggested uh, course of additional research. We will discuss this a little bit more in class so you have a clear idea of what the research proposal is and um, you'll get a handout which describes it. I just want you to begin to think about what your research question might be for this first um, paper. And uh, I guess paper in quotes, right? As we've talked about in class, the this first project is really not a complete essay. Um, I want to start you uh, in the direction of an essay without making you write the full essay. So we're going to do the research proposal followed by the annotated bibliography and we'll do uh, basically two drafts of each and that will become your first research project and that'll lay the foundation and once you have those skills of how to conduct research and how to uh, hone your research proposal 
um, I think you'll be in a, a better situation. Right? So in summary, a uh, research question is the initial question that guides our preliminary research. It's often best to construct this question uh, in such a way that it can be answered yes or no. And you'll follow up probably in your hypothesis with some sort of how or why. So that's really it for research questions. So now that you've watched this video, hopefully you've got a, more of a clear idea. And we'll continue this when we meet in class tomorrow. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit of heads up. And then, you know, there's 10 or 15 minutes less of me talking at you in front of the class and we can kind of work on more of that discussion. All right. So if you have questions in the meantime, feel free to email me or post to the discussion board and I will see you all in class tomorrow.